Welcome to The Grow Show with me as your host, Joe Camerato. I am an entrepreneur who created my company, National Business Capital, from literally zero dollars out of my spare bedroom to over two billion in business loans secured for entrepreneurs nationwide. Since 2007, I have seen just about every type of business. I provide money and help entrepreneurs access capital to scale fast, but I also know that it's possible for you as you scale to replace yourself, to build systems, processes, and great teams of people that can live on without you so you can actually enjoy your life and your company can still grow. I will not only tell you the peaks and valleys of my story, but I will also bring on world-class entrepreneurs to tell their stories and share their lessons on their growth journeys. Welcome to The Grow Show. All right, everybody, welcome to The Grow Show. Got another awesome episode to throw at you guys. Um, you know, thanks for everybody to tune in today. Um, have a really cool entrepreneur on today that's going to share a story of how he went from school teacher um, to entrepreneur, crushing it in the real estate game, uh, built an amazing agency, but also built one of the nation's top uh, uh, coaching programs. And um, we're going to talk about that. But also talk through, I guess, you know, some of the fun stuff and not so fun stuff when uh, making that move from, you know, nine to five teaching to, uh, to entrepreneur, which must have been uh, interesting within itself. So I've got Rob Stein on today. Um, and, you know, over the past 20 years, Rob has developed a life changing process um, in the impossible to fail framework that has allowed him to achieve a level of wealth and financial freedom that he previously thought was only possible for a select few. Few. These principles are universal for any industry, and he has personally applied this process to transition from a teacher with a master's degree to an award-winning music component, uh, composer, publisher, champion-level bodybuilder, top-producing real estate agent, uh, team leader, and entrepreneurial coach. Uh, Rob Stein's impossible-to-fail formula gives entrepreneurs and business owners the proven blueprint to success while creating a paradigm shift in their thinking to get out of analysis paralysis with a step-by-step -step action plan to get your business venture off the launching pad. You'll have the tools and confidence to completely eradicate the fear of failure and create real growth in your business. Well, all good stuff. Uh, you know, Rob, thanks for being on today. And I'm such a firm believer in like nailing your mindset. So I'm, I'm happy to talk about some of that stuff today. Uh, thanks for being on, Rob. Yeah, Joe, thanks for having me, man. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, same here. Yeah, so I guess let's just talk about the well, So you're a school teacher and a bodybuilder, which those two things usually don't normally go together. And then making a move from all that to entrepreneurship, yeah. you just like to do things like differently. So a lot of respect for that. But uh, I guess tell me about going like you know um, you know kind of making that move from you know you know school teacher to uh, to entrepreneur. Yeah, well, there had to be like I think everybody when they go to start a business you know, or go into this world of entrepreneurship where you create your own income, there's always like this, like, aha moment, this light bulb, this shift, like, you know, take us to that moment. Like, what, what was that? Oh, man. Yeah, I'll never forget it. <clears throat> so, you know, I started out as a middle school music teacher. I got my bachelor's in trumpet, my master's in education. Music has always been my passion. Specifically, the marching band activity really lit my passion for music when I got into high school. I didn't really take it seriously until I found marching band and I, I just, man, I was a band geek hundred <laughs> percent and still am. And I knew that I wanted to teach. I've always been a teacher at heart. Even when I was like 14 years old, I knew I wanted to teach and help other people. And so I went into music and as I was getting my master's degree in education and I started student teaching and getting into the public school system, I quickly realized it was specifically one day during student teaching when I was just watching and observing the teacher and then I was brought in and, and, and doing some teaching with the kids that I just thought like, wow, this is a lot different than I thought it was going to be. And I love teaching, but I am not going to love teaching public school enough to do it for the next like 25 to 30 years. There's just no freaking way I'm going to do that. And I've always been burning the candle at both ends since I was in middle school, high school, college, uh, really just striving to always do bigger and better things. And as I went closer to finishing college, I realized, you know, how much of teaching school is not teaching. 
there's so much bureaucracy, politics, school boards. It's there's a whole lot of nonsense. And additionally, your income is capped, right? So, and as I started teaching, it even further solidified. Man, it doesn't matter if I come in and give my all or if I come in and completely check out, which I would never do, but my income is just capped and that's just unacceptable. Like where's the incentive? And for those of you that are like, well, teachers should just be endlessly passionate about teaching other people's kids. Like, why don't you get in the classroom and try it <laughs> and be underpaid, <laughs> you know, under to make a living. <laughs> yeah, and constantly yeah. have things piled on you that are not teaching. You know, I remember we were on a pay freeze once and we had like stay at home moms who have never worked a day in their life telling us we got paid too much at 50 grand a year, you know, like it's just so much. Yeah. That's, that's um, crazy. And, and I mean, mad props to teachers. I just knew I couldn't do it forever. And so I was actually 22 when I started my first business, I was sitting in a coffee shop, just scratching out on a notepad. And I knew that the marching band world was where I wanted to become an entrepreneur. And really the only way to do that with significant income is writing original music, reselling it. So I just dove headfirst into that. And I did get a teaching job because I needed a job and I did get a solid job at a college. And I taught middle school music for eight years while I built my first business from scratch. And it was very challenging because the impossible to fail framework that I have, the pillar is getting a blueprint, a coach, a program, like what I offer real estate agents in my training course, Earth to Orbit. That is a blueprint that you can get when you get started. Because the marching band world, entrepreneurial world is such a niche thing. And it's so small. There is no blueprint. There is no coach. There is no community. There is no blueprint. There are no workshops. You really just have to figure it out. And there at the time, there were literally like two people in the world that were doing what I wanted to do. And so I just tried to emulate them. And I really took a lot of time to figure it out. And over the course of eight years, a lot of grit and hard work and creativity and learning how to run a business like a business because I had no business experience. But once I started running my music business like a business and of course got better at my skill set, that's when things really took off in about year five. So, you know, years one through five, I was making like 20 to 30 grand a year from my music thing. And then once I increased my skill set, started getting into marketing, years five through eight was where it really took off. And eventually I got to making about a quarter million dollars a year through that business. And I quit my teaching job. And I became a full-time entrepreneur in that space. And I'll never forget when I told my administration and my fellow teachers that I was going to quit that job. And they couldn't believe it because I was tenured. I had pension. You know, maybe one day I could work up to 80 grand a year after 30 years. And they were like, how could you do that? You've got a pension. You've got tenure. You've got jobs. You've got these beautiful golden handcuffs. Why would you do that? And I'm like, you hate your job. You bitch about this job every day. You're just not going to do you're not going to have the courage and to take the risk. And that's fine. And I'm not judging you for that, but this is what I'm doing. And it, it was really quite challenging because teachers are, are not entrepreneurs. And I was never part of an entrepreneurial community. So I still felt very isolated as an entrepreneur. You know, my family, my wife, endlessly supportive, but I still felt fairly isolated. So I got into entrepreneurship uh, eight years into teaching and quit my job. Now, I also used to be quite large and eventually kind of hit a rock bottom point and found the P90X program. If any of y'all remember Tony Horton crushing it, he really revolutionized like the at home workout space. And I did that and I, lost yeah. a bunch of weight, you know, over six months, learned how to eat, you know, lost a bunch of weight, got the little six pack and the got into the gym after that. And health and fitness just became part of my life. And over time I started just digesting information as fast as I could reading, 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 and I found a website that had natural bodybuilder forums and they would have contest diaries where they would basically like log every day of preparing for a contest. And I started reading into it and I was like, man, I think I can do that. Now, growing up, you know, I used to be fat. I got made fun of for being fat. And so, of course, that has something to do with it. Right. Because I wanted to prove to the world that like I could do this. Like I'm going to do something that I that I went my whole life thinking wasn't possible. And what I love about bodybuilding, there's so many great things between bodybuilding and entrepreneurship, like discipline, you're competing against yourself. It's the literally the hardest mental and physical thing you can do. And over the course of many years of competing and, and coaching, you know, I became a professional winning shows. And so that was also very fulfilling. And that's still a part of my life. So then I got into real estate about six years ago because my dad has been in, in this in the industry his whole career. And after I quit teaching, and was doing the full-time entrepreneur thing for a couple of years. I was like, man, I think I wanted another income stream. 
I want to learn about real estate. My dad's crushing it. I would like to know to develop the skill set to manage his portfolio one day, whenever that time comes. So he invited me to a seminar with his coach. And I was very nervous, <laughs> but I went. And it was so crazy because it was the first time, Joe, that I was ever surrounded by other like-minded people. I went my whole entrepreneurial career never yeah. <laughs> meeting other entrepreneurs ever. And all of a sudden, I'm surrounded by people and they're like, so what are you doing in real estate? And I'm like, such a noob. And I'm like, I I'm trying to you know, start a real estate business and do some investments and get my license. And I'm thinking they're going to be like, ha, you know, these are all seven, eight, nine figure people. And they were all, that's amazing. I did that. I started from scratch. Here's where I'm at. You can definitely do it. Here's my number. Call me. Let me know. I can help. Let's form a game plan. And every single person was so positive, which was such a drastic yeah. <laughs> so change crazy. from yeah. everything about my whole life hearing other than from like my parents. Right. And I was like, this is awesome. And so then I just dove headfirst into real estate and the entrepreneurial world. And it was hanging out with those types of people that got my wife and I thinking about what is really possible. You know, we were born and raised in New Jersey and I'll never forget. We were at an, an event with some of our entrepreneur real estate investor circle. And we had a really kind of life altering conversation with someone there. And she was like, where's your happy place? I was like, I don't know, Colorado Springs, somewhere like that. She's like, why don't you move there? And I was like, oh, we couldn't move there. And it just stopped there for me. And she was like, why not? And I was like, hmm. All right, let's walk down that path. And after two hours, my world was rocked. And Katie and I talked for an hour and a, a day and a half on the way home. And by the time we got home, we were like, we're moving. <laughs> and so she quit her job. <laughs> you know, she quit her job being a teacher. She had she was making 60 something grand a year, amazing health benefits. And we we burned the docks, moved 2,000 miles away to Austin, Texas, and started a real estate company. You know, and and life was good. You know, we didn't really worry about money. We were kind of capped as to where we were going to be, but um, when we moved here and it, it was very scary, you know, we went six months without making any money in real estate, money's flying out of the account, teary eyed on the couch, thinking we made a huge mistake, fear, doubt, all of those things just weighing on us so heavy, but we just stayed. No committed. entrepreneur has ever been where you are. <laughs> Every, yeah, <right? laughs> uh, if you're watching the video uh, and I know Joe, airs these videos too. You'll see in my office, I have some great posters. One of them is, is the success iceberg here. And what most people see is the top, right? But they don't see everything that, that we had to go through to get there. And so That's right. heavy fear, yeah. heavy doubt. I remember one night we got back from an open house and no one came. We had no business crying on the couch, looking at each other like WTF did we do? We made a huge mistake, but we just doubled down and eventually we started gaining traction. And eventually we started getting really good at real estate and we started succeeding in a level that I never thought possible. And since then, it's just been pushing harder, engaging with the right coaches, surrounding myself with the right people. And then after becoming one of the top 5% agents in the nation, utilizing my skills as an educator and a top producer to build an incredible course and utilize my educator skill set to help the, the agent I used to be, to help the entrepreneur that I used to be, where it's not a work ethic issue. It's a just tell me what to do issue. Give me the knowledge and the mindset and the skill set that I need. And that's what I'm passionate about. So I'm passionate about teaching people that want to learn and taking my journey and unique set of experiences from you know teacher to multi-business owning entrepreneur and helping them accomplish what it is they're looking to do. That's awesome, man. And so, so is that, I'm assuming this is where the whole impossible to fail kind of concept came out yeah. of and, and was born. Like talk, like what is impossible to fail? Let, let's talk about that. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I wrote my first book titled impossible to fail it's being published in quarter two. And I was talking with my marketing team and we were really trying to come up with the framework and we were going down this path that we're on now of like, dude, you launched a music business. You became a pro bodybuilder. You became a top agent, you own a brokerage and a coach, and you're doing mindset. Like these are all completely unrelated things that have been achieved at a high level. How did that happen? And I said something along the lines of, well, I really just set it up that I want it to be impossible to fail. And so we went down that path and really it comes down to, yeah. I have applied over the course of launching so many different aspects and building them and scaling them 
as I analyze and perfect this, I realize it's always been the same process that I just got better and better at. And then when I became, when I decided to get into the speaking and coaching and writing space, I already had a lot of experience in entrepreneurship. And, and fortunately I had money to invest in it and things took off extremely quickly by just applying this framework. So the impossible to fail framework is the fact that there is a guaranteed scientific <laughs> blueprint that is proven to produce consistent and repeatable results when you take it, that if you're trying to accomplish something in business or personal fulfillment, that if you apply this framework with massive action and relentless consistency and time, it is literally impossible to fail because failure is only failure if it's permanent and people will associate setbacks with failure. And I do not believe a setback is a failure. I believe a setback is a learning experience and we don't get better without learning experiences but unless you quit if you get the right information and apply it properly it is literally impossible to fail and i want to give people hope that you know if i can go from being a middle school teacher to where i am now any anyone can, there's nothing special about me dude there's nothing special about me other than i'm able to do more things faster than most people are willing to do i get the right info and i apply it immediately as fast as I can. And most people have hesitation. They have fear. They don't take action. And I'd rather get banged up along the way and just learn what works and doesn't work. But I want to give people hope that you can literally do anything you want if you get the right information and apply it properly. And that's what the impossible to fail framework is all about. I love that. I, you, you've said a, a, a number of things right now that, I, that one really resonate with me and, and, you know, as an entrepreneur listening to uh, to my show, I, I hope it's resonating with you. Um, and if you're in the beginning stages, it might not. But I think as you go through this, a lot of things you're saying will. Yep. One is you initially said, hey, it took me like five to eight years to really get rocking. Like year five, you had some income coming in year five to eight, you nailed marketing. You went, you know, hit you know, 250K. Like for me, like the first five years in starting my company, it was like nothing felt like it was really happening. Then like, boom, yep. like you know, year six, seven, and eight is like where things really, really change big time. Yes. Um, you know, the other thing is just being afraid to like take risks and fail. Um, I think that prevents so many people in life from whether they're starting a business or not, just like growing and being better. It's like everyone tries to be so safe. And yeah. I like actually what you said is like, it, it, they're, they're not failures, they're setbacks. They're really all learning opportunities. And yes. I think about the most challenging times in my life and especially in my business and in my, my entrepreneurial journey over mm -hmm. the last 15 years, mm -hmm. like some of the most challenging effed up times and moments and, you know, failures, AKA setbacks, um, were the, like the best, you know, learning experiences and where I had massive growth after because it like punches yeah. you in the face. Yeah. And instead of giving up, I'm like, wait a second, you readjust, realign, and then you, you, you know, you nail it. And, um, you know, and I think it all goes back to, you know, mindset, you know, and we were talking about this a little bit, uh, you know, Rob, like, you know, I really just believe that really mindset and business is everything. And, and, you know, and, and, and you do as well. What did you do to kind of keep your mindset in check? you know, when, you know, when these challenges were happening, cause like I've been there in these moments, like what the F did I do? <laughs> right. I, you know, put over a hundred thousand dollars in credit card debt mm -hmm. and every dollar I had into my business and like what, and it, you know, it's, it's 18 months in like, Oh my God. Right. right. Now you got business bills and personal bills. It's a scary time. How'd yeah. you keep yourself in check in those moments? Yeah, man. That's great because it's a great question because everyone goes through those things. And the reality is that people that are successful utilize those moments as opportunity because you have two choices when, when the entrepreneur or life roller coaster like punches you in the gut, you can be a victim and wallow in your sorrow, or you can learn from it and just immediately take action. And I had Throughout my journey, I talk about this a lot in the course. I'm very transparent about the failures and learning experiences I've had along the way because people need to know, like, this is not all sunshine and rainbows. We all have the same struggles. One of them, you know, when I left teaching and I was still building my business, I actually taught for a couple of years and had an incredible, what I perceive to be a once in a lifetime opportunity to be a huge higher up at, at a corporate music company that manufactured music instruments. 
and they wind me and dye me and they fly me out and they make it seem like it's going to be incredible. And I was like 24 and I took the job and I went out there and it was long story short, it was not what they said it would be. I wound up being fired within two months of being at that position. And I left my first teaching job and I had nothing. And I went back home like jobless back to live with my parents when I was like 25 years old. And I was like, well, I could either get some like minimum wage BS yeah. job or I can build my business and just be relentless and get another teaching job until I do. And that's what I did. As you go through struggles, I've just always been a very persistent type person. And as I started getting wins, I realized that if you utilize a perceived failure or setback as an opportunity, those are always when you're going to have your biggest periods of growth. Now, it wasn't easy because a lot of people will hear this kind of stuff and they'll be like, man, so, you know, life must just have blew up. And Rob was just like, oh, OK, well, it can only get better from here. Like, no, no, man, we were stressed. We were crying. We were like, what did we do? Should we move back to New Jersey? Like it was really really hard. But the bottom line is that you just must learn and keep going and get the right information. So the pillar of the impossible to fail framework is the blueprint. And a lot of people, right, there's, there's four fears that I've categorized in the book. I've taken fear of failure and kind of broken it down into four categories. And one of them, the big one is fear of the unknown. That is a huge deal breaker for people. They want to start something new and it's unknown. So they're scared. And part of fear of the unknown is you don't know what to do. You're going to start a business. You're going to try to do something big and you don't know what to do. And because you don't know what to do, or there's so many things you can do and you don't know what to do first, it stops you from just taking any action at all. And the reality is that when you engage with education, the blueprint, as I call it, meaning an online course, a program, a one-to-one -one coach, a mentor, YouTube freaking university, which is free, and you can learn to do anything. When you know that you're doing the right thing, it's not unknown anymore. And you can take action on it. Now, additionally, it is in the human spirit to fear the unknown and conquer it anyway. The Wright brothers conquered the fear of flight. I drive a Tesla because Elon Musk conquered the fear of building a new industry. At some point, someone built the first ship and sailed across the ocean. It is in us as people to fear the unknown and conquer it. So rest assured that you can fear the unknown and, and, and have setbacks and keep going. But the reality is no one that has achieved anything of substance has not faced adversity. And it's easy to see a perceived, you know, a, over a 20 year overnight success where you look at a company or a person and say, they must just never have any adversity. And that's not true. The difference is they just think differently. They realize that there is an opportunity in every setback and you can either learn from it or you can grow, right? You can grow from it. And I just chose to be diligent. I also had a lot of support and I leaned on my support. I leaned on my coaches. I leaned on my entrepreneurial community to say, here's what I'm struggling with. What should I do? And sometimes it's just as much as bro, just keep going. You're doing everything right. You know, I remember one conversation I had with my real estate coach when I was, I, I transitioned from a top 5% solo agent to building my team and being a solo agent and building a team and recruiting and leadership. Those are very different skill sets. And I was building my team and we were not profitable and I was working hard. And I remember I had a real frank conversation with him and I said, dude, I don't know if I could do this anymore. I'm losing incredible amounts of money. I'm super stressed. The juice is not worth the squeeze. I'm thinking about giving up the team. And he said, Rob, I'm telling you. Now, this is one of the best in the world at coaching teams. He was like, you are doing the right thing. You are three feet from gold. You need to just keep your head down and keep pushing. And within six months, your life is going to be totally different. And I trusted him. And I said, okay. Four months later, I had my first $100,000 commission month. Now, nice. Like, That's have, awesome. <laughs> yeah. And I could have quit. What if I would have quit? What if I would have dropped the team? Yeah. But I had the right community. And that's yeah. the part of the impossible to fail framework, finding your tribe, as I call it, surrounding yourself with the right people who have done what you're trying to do, who have a track record of teaching other people how to do it. When times are tough, gang, if you have a setback, ask people who have been there, how did you do this? Because the reality is, gang, you can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. And it is not weakness to ask for help. So many people think it's a weakness to ask for help. No one has accomplished anything without help ever. It is strength. 100%. Say, I'm having a struggle. 
how can I get past this? And as long as you're surrounding yourself with the right people, you can instill the right mindset and know how to proceed from the setback you're having. And I was just very intentional, Joe, about surrounding myself with the right people. So as those things happen, and they still happen today, but fortunately I have great coaches. I'm part of great masterminds and great communities where the instant I need something, I have no hesitation to reach out to them and say, here's the struggle. Who's been here? What should I do? And I get the help I need and I apply it instantly. Good stuff. And, and it, you know, all, all these things you're saying are, are so good, you know, and so true. And entrepreneurs want to help entrepreneurs. I, you know, I, I didn't learn about some of these organizations too, that you can be a part of to like tap into a community like um, EO, which is entrepreneurs organization. There's mm -hmm. others like YPO. Mm -hmm. And, and I found about, about these things like later on in life. But when I first started my business, I wish I would have joined something like EO. EO also has an accelerator for anyone that hasn't broken a million to help you get there. And then mm -hmm. once you break a million in sales, you can be a member of, of EO. And, um, and there's a, another other ones like Vistage and there's, there's a ton of them out there. Yeah. Um, they're all great in all, in all different ways. And there's so, you know, you could say, Oh, well, I don't know. I, my network, but you can have all the excuses in the world. But if you really want to find there's these, you know, entrepreneurial organizations out there that you can be a part of, there's a fee, pay it, you get your money back, you know, tenfold. Awesome. Um, and, um, and, you know, and it, and it's super, uh, you know, it's super helpful and nothing's perfect when you get started. I mean, that, that's just the reality. Um, and, you know, the most important thing, you know, you, you know, reach, you said reach out to someone who's like been there is like, just, you know, where you're getting your information from is really important. A lot of times yeah. we'll reach out to friends and family, but if they're not really have been an entrepreneur, it's very hard for them to really give you good advice. It's not that they don't want to, they just don't have the experience in it. You right. know, just like, you know, you go to your accountant and CPA for like, you know, tax advice or you're trying yeah. for legal advice. You yeah. probably want to go to an entrepreneur to get, you know, business advice and you want to make sure that, they've like been successful in business. Cause if yes. not, then maybe they're not giving you good advice. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, those, those things are a little bit important. Um, yeah. but entrepreneurs want to help, you know, other entrepreneurs. So what's your core focus right now, Rob? Is it, um, you've got this awesome book coming out, which I can't wait to check out and read. Um, and you know, where's your focus now? Like in, in your business, is it helping others, you know, grow and scale? Is it on the real estate side? Yeah. Uh, so I have two primary focuses now. One is just the mindset coaching. You know, I do mindset coaching in the real estate space. Of course, I'm a uh, mindset coach for some of the top performing arts ensembles in the world, mortgage, all sorts of industries. And I just love that. It's always been my passion because the truth is that everything starts with your mind. And some people that haven't had exposure to mindset training are like, forget that. Just teach me the skills. You won't be able to apply the skills in the right way for long enough if your mind isn't dialed in. And so I love that. Uh, the other real hard focus I have now is my real estate sales course. It took two years to build over $150,000 invested. We built a custom interactive platform because the reality is, and I know this firsthand, when you get your real estate license, you learn how to get a license. You don't learn how to have a career as an agent. You don't learn how to get leads. You don't <laughs> learn how to convert leads. You don't learn how to build a business. You don't learn how to work with clients or negotiate or anything. And you get your license and you go, what do I do now? We have an over 80% dropout rate in the first two years in the real estate world because it's a lot wow. harder than people think. It's a huge skill set. And, you know, some people realistically just probably aren't cut out for it because it's really hard. And if you don't have accountability and the right mindset and the desire, that's not something you can be taught. But there is definitely a huge percentage of that 80% that is desperate to succeed and they want to work hard. The problem is you're, we're commission only, right? And there's only so long we can go without getting paid. And so most yep. people that a lot of people that drop out, it's not that they're not cut out for it. It's that they couldn't get the right information in the right time frame, And they pass the point where they can stop not getting paid and then they have to go back to a salaried position. So my goal in the earth to orbit course at earth to orbit training.com is to teach people the proven guaranteed blueprint. That's going to get you consistent, repeatable results to get you closing three to five deals a year without paying for leads. Even if you're brand new, that's what I did. That's what I've taught hundreds of agents how to do because I have that educator skill set, and a lot of real estate uh, coaches 
have great real estate experience, and I'm not discounting that whatsoever. Personally, I don't think having success in something makes you qualified to teach others how to do it. You have to know how to convey information in a positive way, in an empowering way that allows the people you're teaching to most importantly implement what you're teaching them. So when people are done with one of my workshops or seminars or they're done training online, they go, I know exactly what to do and they go do it. So that's really the push right now, whether you're an individual agent uh, that is not achieving consistency in your business, new or experienced, or if you're a team leader and you know that training your agents is time consuming and challenging, if you own a brokerage and you want your brokerage to be more profitable and get your time back, uh, that is the type of people that can really, really benefit from this program. Good stuff. And, I, and I'm sure that's where the teaching experience merges in with the entrepreneurial experience in, in this industry. And it's actually kind of cool because you're still using the teaching piece, but in your own entrepreneurial way to deliver uh, a different type of message. And you get to teach in your own way, right? which, you know, you mentioned was a, a you know, I think a big challenge uh, when you were, you know, you know, a teacher at you know public school. Yeah, so it was because now really cool stuff now that comes back to, full circle, you know, yeah, I just get to teach. I get to teach people that want to be taught that are choosing yeah. to be here, are choosing to pay money to engage in my education. And most importantly, I know that I'm able to have a really positive impact on their life. And the cool thing is now with online coaching versus when I was really focused on building my brokerage and now I'm more focused on online coaching. You know, if I'm if I'm working with 20 or 30 agents here versus hundreds of agents, thousands of agents nationwide, I'm just able to serve so many more people. And that's really my mission. Good stuff. All right. So uh, lastly, um, one is how can folks find you and what is um you know, a tweet that you would leave people with um, to all the entrepreneurs out there, a little piece mm. of growth advice. Yeah. Thank you for asking. If people want to engage, gang, the quickest way to do it is check out my YouTube. There are tons of incredible videos for free mindset, whether it's personal or business, you can check it out at robstein.tv. That's R-O-B-S-T-E-I-N.tv. Robstein.tv, take you right to my YouTube channel. You can look me up at Rob Stein, Impossible to Fail on Instagram or Facebook and check out all my content. If you want to check out the sales course, it's earthtoorbittraining.com. And if I were to give a tweet, Joe, I would say the right education applied with massive action, relentless consistency, and time, it is impossible to fail. Good stuff. Well said, Rob. Thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate and respect your time. Uh, everybody watching, thank you for your time as well. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Don't give up. Remember, it's impossible to fail if you follow Rob's uh, blueprint and everything he talked about on the show today. Uh, so keep doing what you're doing and keep growing. Thanks for tuning in. Be well. Thank you, Joe. Thank you.